Howdy, so I thought I'd come on and make a video about communications after like a major SHTF event. I'm talking something major. Communications has been a, a pretty hot topic ever since Hurricane Helene for obvious reasons. Sadly, there's a lot of misinformation going on out there. Once again, what we have is a bunch of so-called prepper channels and some homesteading channels and you know, related types of channels that are all coming out there and telling you uh, about the best way to uh, be able to communicate after a major event. Well, first off, we have to define major event, okay? Because uh, the event that is going on in with, with Hurricane Helene in western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, uh, that is while it's an SHTF for anyone involved, it's not like it's a national or a global SHTF. So, you know, when you talk about things like Starlink or satellite communications, it's perfectly fine. Not a problem. However, there are a lot of individuals that I think are um, just, just not knowledgeable enough to understand how these systems work to why you shouldn't rely on satellite technology for a major SHTF, like a, a national or an international global SHTF. Number one, those satellites, those satellite systems, whether it be Starlink, whether it be your satellite phone, you, your, your, whatever device you own, whether again it's a Starlink or whether it's a, a sat phone, has to communicate with that satellite, okay? That satellite communicates back down to Earth. What happens from there is in 99.9% .9 of the cases, that data that is received from that satellite goes through the World Wide Web. Are you starting to see a problem here? So what will happen is things like sat phones and things like Starlink will no longer be able to function because you won't have access to be able to get to those systems to begin with those systems won't have any data other than what's bringing you know brought in from the satellite they won't have any data to share okay because everything going to those systems will be cut off so that satellite system will be isolated well here's the thing things like your sat phones things like starlink have to rely on those ground-based internet enabled systems in order to function in fact there's only two uh, two groups, if you will, of individuals that I am aware of that have the ability completely outside of the World Wide Web to even function using their satellite communications. And that would be, of course, the U.S. military. And the other one, believe it or not, would be Walmart. Walmart has their entirely own satellite system networks, you know, and when I say system, I'm talking about all the infrastructure to run it from operating systems on up to the actual satellite in space itself. So you have to understand that there is a lot that goes into that for them to be able to have those standalone isolated systems. Your sat phones and your Starlinks and whatnot are not standalone isolated systems. They require the same big www as what your current internet provider is giving you right now. So those will be useless. So let's get that out of the way right now. Okay, your, your big satellite systems are going to become a pretty useless thing. So what is, what is a reliable way that you'll be able to communicate after a major SHTF to where there's the loss of the internet? Well, ham radio, but not this one. Okay, this is a bow thing. You know, uh, there are many like it. This one is mine. Uh, and you've seen these a million times. Okay, but this bow thing here, it's dual band, okay? It will, it will uh, operate on 2 meter and 70 centimeter, okay? However, those bands are both line of sight bands, meaning that typically you have to have your target, the person you're talking to, within line of sight to be able to use this. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be within, you know, a quarter mile so you can see them standing there. However, your antenna needs to be able to see the other antenna, okay? And that's how these devices work. 
Why? Well, there you get into wavelength and a bunch of math and calculations and stuff like that. But when it comes to things like uh, frequency bands like 2 meter and 70 centimeter, okay, which are in the UHF and VHF, well, VHF, UHF, I tried to do it from small to large, uh, which is the very high frequency to ultra high frequency range. Those signals don't typically bounce back to Earth, okay? Um, UHF gets absorbed very easily in vegetation like leaves, okay? So that's one reason why it's really only good for line of sight because vegetation will wipe it out in a heartbeat. So <clears throat> what about these guys that you hear talking around the world on ham radio? Why, why am I not able to talk around the world on this radio? Well, because of the wavelength, okay? Wavelength and length is a is a key part of what it's saying how long the wave is okay <clears throat> there is only a, a a small band of frequencies that are just the right size that they happen to bounce off the ionosphere okay that is what you hear of as shortwave hf communications your your dx your long range communications and what is happening there is that wavelength is, is just a certain size so that it literally bounces off the ionosphere back to Earth and bounces back, and it's just a ping pong ball going back and forth, right? And I've got some charts that I can show you and all that, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and maybe I should bring you on over to that now. So on your screen, you will see I, I've got a page that has radio spectrum on it, and it's got VLF, LF, MF. HF, VHF, and UHF. Well, when it comes to things like ham radio, you're going to most likely be working with the HF, VHF, and UHF uh, bands, okay? That's high frequency, very high frequency, and ultra high frequency. And the ARRL has a nice little chart that you can get for free to check it out, so you can get a kind of an idea of what different... Uh, what different bands are, are where kind of helps I don't know it, it helps clarify it a little bit to me anyway so as I was talking about a little bit ago uh, this radio that I have is good for two meters here and 70 centimeters down here okay those are the U UHF band well uh, no I will two meters is actually VHF my apologies um, two meters is, is VHF and then UHF is going to be 70 centimeters. However, HF, HF is what you want for distance. So something over in the middle here, like your 17 meter, your 20 meter, those are going to be much, much better for, for long range communications. However, that is not going to come from a Baofeng radio like this, okay? And this is why I wanted to show you the differences in this. This is great, and, and I'm telling you, radio communications is the way to go for communication. But what people need to understand is that they're, they're, you, you can't get everything for nothing, okay? And, and here we run into this problem in, in the preparedness community to where the people, and, and I'm not necessarily speaking about the person listening to this video, but many, many people out there in the preparedness community don't really want to put any effort into anything and that presents a problem when it comes to certain areas because the only way that you're going to be able to get any juice from the squeeze is if you put some work into it and communications is one of those areas okay plain and simple and if you go and you study this is how i'm able to have this conversation with you right now everything i'm discussing with you right now you will learn while studying for your technician's license, okay? Every, in fact, a lot of the stuff that I'm covering is like on the test. So, you know, you learn so much by putting the work into your communications. And you'll learn how to be able to utilize different types of setups for different ranges and whatnot. Um, the main thing that, that I'm hoping to impress upon people with all of this is that you're not going to have an easy way to have long-range communications without the internet or the satellite network which relies on the internet to work um, you're gonna have to go with with what you can provide yourself which is going to be radio communications like this so this is uh, like I showed you just this is just a handheld 
Now you can get, uh, they have a, uh, I've been looking at one, um, I will try to find it real quick. I'm sure I can because I keep, I keep looking at the thing because, uh, well, <laughs> I want it so bad. I think this is it right here. Nope, that's the cross. Hang on. I will, uh, I will bring it up. I will find it and I will bring it up. It is a, uh, quad band. Uh, hang on. I will bring it up. Is it? No, it's the D. I'm looking for the D. Not the cross band. Right here. <clears throat> so this, this radio right here. I want this radio so bad I can't see straight. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully the father will uh, provide a way for me me to be able to uh, come across one. But this is a quad band. Um, this is a mobile unit. This is something you would normally put in your car, but of course it could be set up to be able to put in your home as well. Uh, however, this will cover this will cover the uh, the bands. Let's go back to this chart here. <clears throat> this that will cover your two meter and 70 centimeter which is the same as what my handheld will uh, will carry however that will also include six meter and where is it at here 10 meter which is right here so now 10 meter once you know the conditions have to be right but you can speak uh, through a distance with 10 meter but the only way you can do it is with something that they call tropospheric ducting, okay? And that happens from tem temperature inversion. In other words, uh, I think I've got that question up. Uh, it's a radio propagation phenomenon that occurs when a temperature inversion creates a duct for radio signals to travel along. So in other words, you can't always rely on this 10 meter for long-range communications. And the reason why I bring up 10 meter is because that's what this radio here will do right it, w it will do the two meter the 70 centimeter six meter and the 10 meter the only one of those that have any chance whatsoever at long distance communications is the 10 meter and again that's only when conditions are ideal for that to happen it's certainly not uh you know an, an everyday all the time kind of thing so it's important to know all this stuff and the only way you're going to know all this stuff is to put the time and the effort into learning this stuff which I urge you absolutely to do. Um, I put it, I uh, put a video up to where I showed the course that I was taking. Um, you don't have to, by the way, you, you don't have to, to uh, go with, with this paid course or anything like that. You can go with uh, the ARRL has free study guides. They've got everything you need on the ARRR website to be able to help you pass the test. There is a plethora of ham radio YouTube channels that will be able to help you pass the test or understand this technology a little bit better. But understand that these, these channels coming out on YouTube and spitting out a bunch of nonsense about communications and their communication plans when they don't understand even the, the very little, you know, little bittiest bit of it is ridiculous. And my problem, my biggest problem is, is there's a lot of people out there that will listen to these individuals and they'll run out to buy these products and they won't even test them. They won't have any idea what their capabilities truly are. And then when that day comes to put that, that equipment to the test, there is there's going to be just absolute horrific problems people are not going to know how to use their and it's not just communications equipment it's everything from their you know backup power equipment everything i mean because unfortunately as i said before and hopefully it's not any of you watching this video but there are a lot of people out there that just won't put any effort into it and there are some areas that if you don't put the effort into it you're just not going to get nothing out and when it when it comes to communications and your only reliable form of communications well you're only going to get out of it what you're willing to put into it and so that's my message to you don't don't go out and spend if if you're preparing for the big shtf where we lose the grid and we lose the internet and all of that good stuff don't invest money in a satellite system whether it be starlink or whether it be a satellite phone 
because it's not going to work any better than your cell phone is going to work when that happens because those satellite systems connect to computers on the ground that connect to the same www that you're watching this video from right now so keep that in mind when you choose your communications choose wisely and put the legwork in to understanding what it is that you're investing in hope you all have been well i uh I've been hanging in there. I'm still studying for mine. I took a break from studying. Blue uh, has an oral, if I'm going to say it correctly, I doubt I will, an oral hematoma. Uh, basically, she burst a blood vessel in her ear. And so, one of her ears, the flap, is uh, really swollen up and uh, uncomfortable and stuff like that. And, uh, well, she's my kid. And so, I uh, have been... I've been dealing with that and so I kind of backed away from the studies for a little bit I'm a little over halfway done and uh, I'm gonna be getting right back into it here soon hopefully get some testing done and uh, and have my own amateur radio license technician class license again I urge everybody else even if you don't go to get your license right at least get involved in one of these these little things that that will teach you and test you and become proficient at being able to test those pa uh, pass those tests sorry so that you know the information because there's a lot of people even going out and buying these right now that think that they've got it that they they've got it they no problem you know i see it all the time i'm in in facebook groups ham radio facebook groups and and every single day people are coming in there with the um, with the thought that somehow that this radio is going to reach their family all the way across the country, okay? And that's not how it works. And unfortunately, you don't have a lot of channels on YouTube. Aside from, I mean, the ham radio channels would be a massive ex exception to this, right? They're going to teach the right thing. The problem is, is you've got a bunch of prepper and homesteading channels that won't, okay? And that's the problem. If, you know, if you want to learn how to play golf, folks, go ask a golfer, right? Don't go ask a football player how to play golf. That would be the dumbest thing on the planet. Well, the same thing as people, self-proclaimed preppers and homesteaders that claim to be experts, or even if they don't claim to be experts, just when you want to learn about something, if it's ham radio, go to a ham radio channel, okay? Go to a well-known, well-respected ham radio channel, and stay away from the damn prepping and homesteading channels and all that stuff. Because these people are out there just making content to make content to make money. Okay, that's what you mean to them is money. And I know people don't like to hear it, but the truth is the truth. And sometimes the truth sucks. It is what it is. Go out there, put the legwork in, know it is, what it is that you own and how to use it. And make sure that when you need it, that day you are truly prepared and that you didn't just go click add to cart to a bunch of crap shalom